Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to learn about ovulation. Now, why do we need to detect ovulation? Well, detecting ovulation allows you to know the following. Number one, if your intercourse was well-timed around your fertile window for conception, if you can stop having baby making intercourse, which may be more intentional, planned and frequent, uh, the luteal um, phase length, that's the second half of your cycle, and when to expect a period or a positive pregnancy test result. Now, ovulation is the release of a mature egg or ovum from the ovarian follicle. Now, each menstrual cycle, several ovarian follicles will begin to mature and develop under the influence of your pituitary hormones. Now, usually only one follicle develops fully. And while the other follicles recede, it's this dominant follicle that produces an egg, which is going to be released and which is then going to be able to be fertilized, hopefully. Now, the growing follicles secretes increasing amounts of the hormone estrogen and following peak estrogen production, there is that surge of luteinizing hormone uh, and this hormone triggers the release of the mature egg from its follicle and this is ovulation. So once ovulated, the egg is picked up by one of the fallopian tubes and it begins to travel down towards your uterus in the fallopian tube. Now, this is where the fertilization, if it is going to happen, takes place. So the fallopian tube. Now, the follicle that released the egg, it becomes known as the corpus luteum after ovulation and it begins to secrete the heat inducing hormone progesterone, which, as you know, causes your basal body temperature to rise. Now, the lifespan of the egg after ovulation is just 12 to 24 hours. So that's one day, maybe even less. And I think that shock, shocks a lot of people because they think, wow, I have this cycle that goes for, you know, 28 to 32 days and my egg is only alive and viable for up to 24 hours. Now, fertilization must take place within that 12 to 24 hour time frame because after this time frame, the egg begins to degenerate and is no longer capable of being fertilized. Now, it does seem like a short window of time for conception to take place. However, a sperm deposited before ovulation in your body can survive and wait in the female reproductive tract for a few days, so up to five days. So the few days before ovulation takes place are considered your fertile days. Now, ovulation is the event that defines the phases of the menstrual cycle. So the phase before ovulation, when the ovarian follicles are developing, is called your follicular phase. And the phase after ovulation is called the luteal phase. And the length of the follicular phase, as we've discussed, may vary. But the luteal phase length after ovulation is generally constant from cycle to cycle, for lasting about you know 10 to 16 days. Now, when your cycles are irregular, it is usually because ovulation occurred earlier or later than usual. So knowing when ovulation occurred allows you to see if intercourse was well-timed in the fertile window for conception and helps you determine your luteal phase length. And knowing your luteal phase length tells you when to expect your period or a positive pregnancy test result. Now, ovulation takes place on average about two weeks before your period, although it can vary from 10 to 16 days before the onset of menstruation, depending on the length of your luteal phase. Now, during um, a textbook 28 day cycle, ovulation is usually expected to take place between cycle days 13 to 15. And based on this guideline, many women are taught to expect incorrectly um, if, if their cycle's not a textbook cycle, that ovulation will happen on around day 14 of their menstrual cycle. But many women, of course, don't have average cycles. And even those who usually do have um, what's called a textbook cycle will see irregularities from time to time. So do not assume you will ovulate on or around day 14. And as you chart your cycles, you're going to see where you do ovulate. You might, might be surprised that you ovulate quite early or that you ovulate much later than you expected. 
Now, a typical menstrual cycle may be anywhere from 21 to 35 days. Now, some women have cycles that are shorter or longer than this. Now, therefore, ovulation can occur obviously much earlier or later than typical guidelines suggest. For example, ovulation may occur on cycle day 23 during a cycle that is 35 days long for a woman with um, a 12 day luteal phase. Uh, so another example is ovulation may occur on cycle day 10 for a woman with a shorter 24 day cycle and a 14 day luteal phase. So you can see that this variation among women and from cycle to cycle means that there is really no simple one size all fits approach. And the only way to know when you are likely to ovulate is by observing your fertility signs and charting them. Now your ovulation date and your fertile window can be detected obviously by charting your fertility signs. And your body, as you know, produces these wonderful signals that tell you that ovulation is approaching and also when ovulation has passed. And fertility signs that indicate that estrogen levels are high and ovulation is approaching and you're highly fertile, obviously, include observing that increasingly stretchy and egg white cervical fluid and observing a high, soft and open cervix. And commercial devices such as ovulation prediction kits and fertility monitors can also tell you that ovulation is approaching and they do this by measuring the presence of estrogen or luteinizing hormone in your urine. Now charting your basal body temperature allows you to pinpoint the day of ovulation and tells you when ovulation has passed because progesterone obviously raises the basal body temperature after ovulation. So remember, those kits and devices cannot be used to confirm that ovulation has occurred. They'll probably only tell you that you're potentially going to ovulate. Thank you so much for listening and bye for now.